Okay, we're back live here at VMworld 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we are live in San Francisco. And this is where all the action's happening in the, in the cloud, mobile, social, enterprise, consumerization of IT. VMware is thinking big. They're expanding beyond the focus of just VMware as a company, expanding out to thinking big around things outside of VMware. Hyper-V supporting other vendors, building their ecosystem, as we had predicted in 2010. VMware would be a bona fide ecosystem. They'd build the map that Paul Moritz put together, essentially an operating environment for the cloud, mobile, social. They're continuing on that journey. And uh, some historic news here, Pat Gelsinger takes the rein. And we're going to hear from Kristen Nicole in our newsroom. Hey John, well there's plenty going on in the newsroom and of course at the event and um, I think one of the big stories, of course there's lots of product releases going out this morning and everyone seems pretty excited about what VMware has to offer, cloud computing in a box is, is one of the big messages coming out today, EMC is on board and we're seeing a lot of the companies that are within this ecosystem come out and show their support. Uh, there's plenty of, of companies that seem like they're anxious to build more tools and provide more access to that data at the end user level, which is very much what you've been discussing with the, this data infrastructure. Um, I think one of the other big stories that's been buzzing around this morning is what VMware is going to be discussing tomorrow, or rather OpenStack at their board meeting with the voting going on and uh, VMware's support of the OpenStack community. Uh, seems like that's going to be one of the big talking points. It's been doing well. Um, let's see, let's check in on it here. A very controversial post in the sense that um, cloud washing, the laundromat metaphor, um, has always been um, something that the social web and the Twitter sphere has always been, been sensitive to, but um, we've been seeing a big trend towards business value. You heard that from HP, uh, but there's still an emphasis on cloud washing. Is that why that post I find very interesting and uh, Um, let's see, I actually don't have any insight on that yet today. We'll have to come back to that. What are the other hot news uh, happening in Silicon Valley? Well, I, the, one of the things that I did want to go ahead and discuss today is some of the people that have announced uh, their, their product integration with VMware and really taking hold of virtualized cloud-on-the-box solutions. Uh, we did get to hear from Sumo Logic, who had some news come out, and it's really evident how people in the ecosystem are building around around this concept of, of data accessibility and really how data can become a common language to make that data more fluid across organizations or departments within a company and impacting it across the entire organization. Um, I actually got to speak with Kumar from Sumo Logic about some of the things that you need to have a big data startup, especially in, in today's, today's world and having a clear vision, the big picture of how this all fits together is really important in, in driving business around that. And so understanding the end user needs, which is where the accessibility of this data is really going, has been key for Sumo Logic um, and really ties in, in with their news uh, this week. What are you seeing out in the web these days over the past couple of weeks? What trends have you noticed around what's happening in the application space above, uh, above this geeky, under the hood stuff? Because here at VMworld, the big message is um, we're going to you know, abstract away the complexities, put the hood down and hide that from users and applications. Uh, you've been covering the social angle as well as the cloud angle, overseeing the news flow. 
Have you noticed any trends around that? It's like more posts, less posts, more activity, less activity. Um, can you share your thoughts on that and what your observations are? I think on the social side, we're seeing things like uh, Google really step up and try and figure out how to make data accessible when you need it, where you need it. Google Now is probably one of the better examples of their recent initiatives in how they can put the data in the right place. What information are they taking from you? That individual data set, as well as the public data set, combining it and making it relevant to that end user and uh, factoring in all the tools that help them analyze that information faster, give it to you more readily and make something usable out of it. It's, it's really impacting um, outside of enterprise, it's impacting the consumer level applications as well. Kristen, we've been working together uh, um, for a couple of years now. It's been great. We've seen the tide shift a little bit. I wanted to ask you specifically what you're seeing in the, uh, the trends and the flows out there of the news. Obviously, uh, we've been covering big data and cloud mobile and social for years prior before anyone else. Have you seen an uptick in data stories lately and big data in particular? Absolutely. There's been a huge surge in big data coverage and interest. If you look at some of the search trends going on on the web, you can see that there's a clear growing interest in what's going on with big data. Lots of discussion around what that means. Uh, one of the things I'm most interested in is how this impacts the consumer. Um, I think that's one of the more interesting things about this data infrastructure that we're exploring now is how this this really impacts more than just the IT or more than just the, the marketing aspect of, of a company. And what's interesting is the parallel that is taking place with the disciplines that people develop their backgrounds and their skill sets and the type of data that needs to kind of communicate with each other. We're seeing a lot of development on the software side, um, analytics being able to kind of translate that data into whatever necessary output it needs to go into. And um, some great posts have come out from, from Kit Dotson, who is heading up DevOps now, about how the CMO needs to also be the CTO, and you need this convergence of skill sets to really be able to handle everything that's going on with big data and the data infrastructure. There's a lot of things changing um, under the hood in terms of architecture, and it's, it's really starting to show its impact. You know, it's really exciting is that, you know, we had a couple posts go on our site about the Hadoop error, not comparing it to the Linux error. Um, I think last Friday we had that post. We had great validation here inside the cube here at VMworld in San Francisco, validating our thesis that the Linux error is completely different than the Hadoop error. So, you know, chalk that up for a, a victory for SiliconANGLE. Uh, but more importantly, we're seeing a lot more around um, uh, other, other vendors. And so I wanted to ask you, uh, I know we had a lot of activity on the site from some of our other writers around the Xbox. And I've been talking on Twitter recently that Microsoft's looking like a really strong comeback contender. Um, have you seen a lot of activity about the Xbox? I know we've got a story on there today. Um, and we've had some surging on that lately. Can, can you sh share with us what's happening there? I think that's, and it's, it always gets readers excited to see what's going on with Xbox. And it's, it's a transient technology that goes into the home and it speaks to the hacker community and it has a good amount of potential in terms of what Microsoft is trying to do. And similarly to Apple and Google trying to find the best way to put those experiences in front of the consumer and also leverage all the other things that are happening within Microsoft. Um, how can we make software and information and data more accessible across the board? How can we leverage one program for another? How can we figure out the best strategy for presenting our, our services on rival and opposing platforms. Um, so it's always interesting to see what's, what's going on with the Xbox community and especially the way in which it speaks to, to the consumer sector. So let me ask you about the, obviously the hot news of the weekend, which was the Apple Samsung um, verdict. So for the folks out there, um, Apple won the patent case uh, infringement against Samsung. Kristen, I haven't had a chance to look at other than some of the recent updates over the weekend. What's happening in the Apple Samsung case? Can you share those? Any news? Is there, is there anything new? I know there's a, lot, there's a big brouhaha on the web um, about this. So, what's the quick news on Apple, Samsung? Uh, obviously, Apple, the most valuable company in the world. Uh, Tarkin Maynard was trying to talk about IT services, and I'm like, 
Apple's the most valuable company in the world. They only have 8% market share. I personally believe that Apple's going to absolutely continue to steamroll the industry. And with the patent victory behind them, if they go up to double-digit share points on the, on the PC market, uh, they're going to absolutely destroy their earnings going forward, uh, something that, that Wall Street does not understand. That's my opinion. But I want to get a sense of, has anything changed in the Samsung case? Is there anything new that you want to share? I don't know if there's any necess necessarily any new developments in terms of what happened with the case. Apple won the big ruling here. Um, there was another ruling that um, Samsung did not infringe on the design patent aspect of it, but there, there, were, there was a ruling that uh, Samsung did infringe on another patent that was included in this case. And of course, big one for Apple, Apple and Samsung are still friends. They're continuing their partnership for um, OEMs, device manufacturing. I think that's a positive note in all of this. Things have gotten really messy between the two companies, but if they seem to be able to carry on this uh, mutually beneficial partnership, then great, so be it. It's great for all of the iDevice users out there. Uh, the other thing that's going on, though, is people are trying to figure out what this court case means for the rest of the industry. How will it impact Microsoft? How will it impact Android as a whole? Will Apple continue to just go after some of these other Android OEMs and uh, take them to court? They've taken a different approach than Microsoft in terms of trying to set up licensing deals, Apple's going all the way, banning rival devices across the world. So this could have an impact industry-wide. It's a wait-and-see approach. Well, Kristen, a lot of great stuff happening here on the, in the ground. Really appreciate uh, the remote in. Great to see you. You look fabulous. Kristen Nichols, uh, news editor. She runs all of our news operation, as well as taking on other senior roles within SiliconANGLE's group. Great job. And uh, uh, abstract pool automates the geeky message, but ultimately it's the VMware operating system. And uh, this is the data center of the future. It's about big data and data infrastructure. Complete validation around those two trends. Uh, thanks for the news update. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. And uh, we'll be right back uh, after this break with more great interviews here inside the Cube. That's Kristen Nicole live from. Uh, the Silicon Angle newsroom looking good, and we'll see you next time. Bye.